Hello everyone and welcome to another Hackolade video. Today is part two of our Hackolade tutorial that we're going to be uh, presenting to you. And uh, this is actually a little bit of a fundamental uh, uh, part of our tutorial because it will be talking a lot about JSON and JSON schema. This is important for many different uh, reasons. Uh, the first of which being that you know, we are going to be doing a lot of JSON data modeling, whether it's uh, as documents themselves or inside document databases, but we'll also uh, want to understand this very, very clearly because this is the fundamental technology that we use also in Hackolade. You know, there's um, a lot of uh, work that we base ourselves on using uh, JSON technology. So let's dive right in. Um, what is JSON? Well, we're not talking about a Greek hero. Uh, we're talking about the JavaScript object notation. Right, it's a it's a um, abbreviation, obviously, uh, for a way to structure uh, your data, right? So that you can exchange it easily with uh, your different systems, right? So you you create documents, JSON documents that are easy for humans to read, but at the same time also easy for machines to interpret. Right, so it's a lightweight data interchange format. Right, uh, it's used in so many different places, um, and it always compli is comprised of two structures. Right, there's a collection of name value pairs, and then inside there's these ordered lists of values. Right, so let's dive into that and and and, and make sure that we understand this. Inside the JSON document, you will have something called an object. An object is an unordered set of name value pairs, right? They start with a uh, curly left brace and they end with a curly right brace, right? And then the names are always followed by colons and the name value pairs are separated by commas, right? So this is the highest level structure that you will find inside a JSON document. Having said that, inside those objects, you can always find um, uh, something called an array, which is an ordered collection of values. They start with a square left bracket and they end with a square right bracket, right? And values are uh, ordered, right? But they are also separated by commas. And here's the interesting part, you know, the values that you will find inside these um, uh, objects or these arrays can be strings, right? In double quotes, they can be numbers, they can be true or false or null, but they can also be objects, right? So you can have these nested structures, which is super, super important, right? This is probably the most important part that you want to realize when you're starting to work with JSON documents is this nesting of information, right? So keys are always strings, right? Values must be valid JSON data types. We just went over those, right? Um, and that means that you can have an infinite number of ways to organize these things, thanks to the fact that these things are nested, right? So you can have these very, very um, uh, complicated, intricate structures, if you so want it. This is also why you know, they've become very popular, these document structures, these JSON structures. They've been used in many different places, not in the least inside databases. Document databases like MongoDB and Couchbase and you know, the derived uh, variants, DocumentDB, Elasticsearch, for example, you know, all of these types of data, uh, man database management systems are using JSON documents inside them and they allow you to leverage the flexibility of JSON um, when you store uh, data inside these databases. Right. So um, it brings enormous flexibility and ease of use. You know, that's, this is why these types of databases have become so important and so popular. Um, and essentially what they're doing inside these document structures is they are denormalizing the data, right? You're not um, normalizing the data and splitting everything up into different table structures like we used to do in relational databases. No, you're actually going to capture everything all the data that you need into a single document structure. The huge advantage that comes with that is that you don't need to do joins anymore, or at least not as often anymore, right? You can just put everything that you need for a particular transaction or a particular process inside the same document, process that document as a unity of work, as a particular type of information that you're going to use inside that process through and through, um, maintain the integrity of the transaction by maintaining the integrity of that document, right? And avoid having to pull things from lots of different places and joining it all together, right? So this also means that you can be extremely flexible because not all of these documents have to have the same layout, the same schema. 
There is obviously a caveat, right? It's, you have to be careful with this. With great power comes great responsibility, right? So uh, you need to be a little bit careful with this because obviously it has all kinds of consistency implications and you need to be careful with that. But to give you an example of what that might look like, right? So if we think about an order or an ordering process, right? We, on the left-hand side, see you know, a representation of an, such an order with you know, order information, customer information, product information, line items of that order, payment information, and all of that stuff, all of these elements would historically or traditionally be stored inside different table structures. Right? You had an order table, a customer table, a product table, a payment type, an order line, you know, all these different tables would be required to process this particular order, which means you have to join all of these tables together, obviously. Now, let's think about how we might do that in a JSON document structure. Well, it just means that we bring everything together inside one document, right? And we will have, indeed, nested structures inside every inside the document that hold more information about each and every one of those um, uh, entities, the customer, the line item, the product, you know, it's all going to be nested inside one document, right? So we only need to process that one document. Now, obviously, then becomes the question, you know, what does that document look like? What is the structure of that document? And luckily, JSON provides you with some tools for this. The most important tool that you want to be aware of is something called a JSON schema, right? It allows you to annotate and validate JSON documents, right? And it defines what that JSON document should be structured like, right? It's actually written, the schema itself is written in JSON as well, right? So, but it's going to define what the document is is supposed to be looking like, you know, what information is supposed to be present. And uh, obviously there's tools out there that you, can, um, that you can leverage to verify whether a particular document adheres to that standard, yes or no, like a validator. MongoDB has a validator functionality that, uh, that allows you to verify whether or not a document that you want to insert or update inside their database is actually going to adhere to a specified schema. Right, really useful functionality, and it's all standards-based, right? We'll include some links uh, on these slides, obviously, but it's a, it's a standard. It's something that, once it's defined, everyone should be able to understand. And Hackolate as well, you know, we support these standards. We generate these JSON schemas dynamically. We know how to understand this schema syntax, and we actually have some of these validation tools built into ours, you know? So it makes it really easy for you to create not only the documents, but also the schema for the document. A couple of things that I want to highlight um, before wrapping up this um, part of our tutorial. Um, look at how we can represent these documents, right? Because nested structures obviously are not obviously are not um, uh, always represented in the same way when we think about ER diagrams. Right? So entity relationship diagrams tend to be, be focused on normalized data structures, which you see on the left-hand side here, where everything is split up across multiple entities, whereas you know, what you're going to be working with, what you're going to be modeling, is that document is a nested structure. So what we have come up with and what we uh, um, uniquely uh, offer to our clients is the ability to keep these nested structures together inside your entity relationship diagram, um, as you can see on the right-hand side here. You can also look at this as a hierarchical structure, obviously, right? We have uh, lots of functionality and visualization possibilities to help you with that. And you can, um, you can explore that inside our tool. And we allow you to also create models that encapsulate more than one document, right? And, and allow you to see and to visualize and to, to uh, at least at a modeling level, understand the relationships between your documents, right? We link those documents using um, relationships. That brings me to the end of this um, part two of our tutorial. Um, we've taken a big tour of what JSON is and what JSON schemas are. Um, recommend a number of um, reading materials here on this slide, not in the least the new excellent book written by Daniel Kupal, Steve Hoberman, and our founder, uh, Pascal Desmarais, um, which is all about MongoDB data modeling and schema design, but which is very applicable to this topic of this tutorial. I thank you for um, paying attention. I thank you for following this tutorial, and I wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Bye-bye.